I'm Rohit Kosla. I'm a uh, craniofacial plastic surgeon at Stanford University. Uh, we're here today at uh, the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital uh, at Stanford. Uh, we are uh, performing a uh, craniosynostosis reconstruction. Uh, we, today we are treating a nine-month-old uh, infant uh, boy who was born with sagittal craniosynostosis. He has the uh, classic uh, deformity of uh, scaphocephaly. And uh, today we'll be performing a uh, open technique for sagittal craniosynostosis reconstruction, uh, which um, uh, is a near-total calvarial vault remodeling. Um, uh, using uh, a modified pie technique with multiple barrel staves uh, and uh, contouring. This is the CT scan of our patient uh, for today. Uh, this is a nine-month-old uh, boy uh, who, has, who was born with uh, sagittal craniosynostosis. And uh, this is a 3D uh, reformatting of the uh, CT scan. Um, looking at this view, it's a view looking from the top down, so at the vertex of the, of the, um, uh, vertex of the skull. Uh, this is the forehead here anteriorly. Um, and then this is the, uh, the occiput, uh, the posterior aspect, the uh, left side and the right side. And you can see very clearly on this image uh, that the sagittal suture is fused here in the midline from the anterior fontanelle all the way back to uh, the wormian bone and the area of the lambdoid sutures. The lambdoid sutures are open, uh, as are the uh, coronal sutures and the metopic uh, suture. You, this uh, image shows uh, very clearly the uh, classic uh, uh, deformity in sagittal craniosynostosis, which is the scaphocephalic head shape. Um, uh, which means that the head is elongated in an anterior to posterior direction. There is narrowing of the biparietal width uh, as well as the bioccipital width, width creating this uh, very narrow posterior um, uh, occipital bullet, we refer to it as, uh, which indicates the, the narrowing, uh, which means the narrowing of the uh, occiput. There's also some residual, there's also some compensatory frontal bossing here. Uh, because the uh, skull is growing only in the anterior to posterior dimension because of the fusion. Um, you get compensatory frontal bossing and narrowing in the occiput. The skull should be the widest uh, here uh, posteriorly and you can see how it's very narrow. And so the goals of the operation today uh, will be to uh, uh, widen the skull um, uh, and uh, widen the biparietal uh, width to flatten the occiput and then to decrease the anterior